Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting updates, very interesting stuff, especially about Dexilla, Rubial Mosquera, one day after the Dubai Pro. So Rubial posted a live, basically, it's like 10 minutes long and my Spanish is not great, but I had somebody translate for me what he basically said in this uh, live and some things are very, very interesting to hear. So, as you guys know, yesterday Nexilla pretty much disappointed everybody. I mean, a lot of people had him actually winning the show prior to the show or at least expected him to be like in the top two, top three However, he was out of that top 3, he placed 4th. All of the more notable guys uh, beat him, basically. He only beat some unknown guys, so he definitely didn't do well at all. Last year, at his pro debut, he managed to beat Nathan Asha, and this time around, he lost to him as well. And we were expecting a much improved version of Nexilla, who potentially could be like top 5 at a Mr. Olympia, but his conditioning was definitely not where it needed to be in order for him to place well. 4th place at this show for him is not well. Yeah, he is pretty much new to the IBB Pro League, but since the result from last year and having an entire offseason and looking like he made a lot of progress, we expected more from this guy, he didn't deliver, and in this video, he explains what went wrong, why this was the case, and basically the summary of it is this. First of all, he says that he's going back to Spain in two days, and he's going to decide which show he's gonna do next, because his goal is to get the Olympic qualification, so he's definitely competing more, this is not it, he's not gonna, you know, draw back and uh, do an off-season again and stop competing, He is not doing only one show this year, He is gonna continue competing until he gets the Mr. Olympic qualification, he wants to be on the Mr. Olympia stage this year, which I think is really awesome, I'm very excited to see him on stage again, what he needs is really another three or maybe four weeks of dieting, and I'm sure he can win a uh, Mr. Olympic qualifier if he gets his conditioning nailed. If he gets leaner and harder and drier for the stage, yeah, I'm sure he can get a Mr. Olympic qualification. He can be on that stage this year for sure. But then he says he's gonna change his coach and maybe go back to his former coach. And you guys probably already heard he was saying that he was pressured by his sponsors to change the coach, to work with a coach from Kuwait, from the oxygen gym, and he was previously working with that um, different coach from, I believe, from Mexico, uh, and uh, yeah, he was forced to change a coach weeks before the Dubai Pro. And then in this video, he also says that the prep was too short, and certain things uh, didn't go the way he wanted them to go. And also, he says that he was sick a week before the Dubai Pro, and he almost pulled out. Apparently, he was sick when he arrived to Dubai, and uh, he wanted to pull out, but apparently there was pressure again from his sponsors, so he had to compete. That's what he's saying, I don't know how true that is, but yeah, that's the sentiment uh, in this video. And then also he says that he was twerking on stage because he wanted to be different than everybody else, but that part doesn't really matter that much. Uh, what is interesting mainly about what he was saying here is that uh, I don't think he's gonna work out with the guys from Kuwait. I don't think he's gonna stay with that crew. You know, it sounds like he could have placed the better if uh, there was no pressure from the from his sponsors, you know, having to change a coach at the last moment and even forcing him to compete when he was sick. So this Instagram page, who is the best bodybuilder, posted this basically after watching this live from him. And Chris Cormier, who is kind of like uh, Nexilla's mentor, he's not his coach, but he's helping him with his training and, and helping him uh, to make the right decisions in his career and uh, you know, giving him certain tips about uh, competing and so on. And what Chris Cormier is saying here in the comments is that this is not true, that this is basically a lie. However, Rubiel is the one who said this. And if you read the other comments, you will see that Chris was very upset after seeing all this stuff. And he's basically saying that it's all lies. That it's not true. He says, you think I would be okay with someone being treated this manner? This reflects on my character also. Is that what you believe? Then he says, 
It's just not true. Use your brain. Use your brain. What is he trying to tell us here? I mean, it's not like somebody made this up and just assumed this. It's Rubiel who said this. Everybody's speaking about it. It's everywhere on Instagram. So, is Chris Cormier saying that Rubiel is lying? That he's coming up with his stuff? That he's only saying this because he's trying to find an excuse, an explanation for him not being in shape? But it's actually all his fault? I mean, there were videos from Rubiel like a day or two days out of the show in Dubai going shopping at the mall one day before or in his stories. He didn't seem sick in those stories. You know, there is that. So, I don't know, guys. I don't know who to believe, but it seems like Rubiel is not gonna go back to the oxygen gym. I'm pretty sure he's done with them, or that they are done with him after all the things he said about them. Forcing him to compete when he was sick, making him change a coach and not getting in condition because of them and stuff like that. I don't know, I don't know, but yeah, one thing is for sure, he was definitely not in his best conditioning here, and changing a coach weeks before the show, it's definitely not the best thing. And that happened. I don't know if it's him who chose a new coach, or he was actually forced to get a new coach from Kuwait. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. But I'm really happy to hear that he's gonna continue competing and trying to get to the Mr. Olympia stage this year. Because, yeah, the conditioning wasn't great, but in a couple of weeks he can be shredded. You know, and I think he did make progress. I think he was overall more balanced. Yeah, it's probably not the most uh, pleasant uh, physique to look at, not the most aesthetic one, but with this much muscle, with this much size, and with good conditioning, he can probably be even more impressive than somebody like uh, Nick Walker. I mean, who is more aesthetic out of those two guys? And Nick has size, just like Rubio. Probably less, I think Rubio is bigger, but Nick also has conditioning, and Rubio doesn't. So if Rubio gets conditioning nailed, he's gonna be very dangerous. And you can also make an argument that Rubio probably has even better shape than Nick Walker. I don't know about proportions, like his legs may be a little bit too big and that neck is not helping him, but he doesn't have like a wide waist like Nick Walker, he doesn't have a bubble gut, he has really nice looking abs, and like I think uh, bigger legs is definitely a better thing than smaller legs compared to the upper body, like it is case with Nick Walker, so proportions, shape, structure, I think Nick Zilla is definitely ahead of Nick, size-wise, I think he's also bigger, it's all about conditioning at this point, and you know, it's possible that he can't nail it, that he's not able to get in that kind of shape, but I don't know, in my opinion, give him another 3 or 4 weeks of hardcore dieting, and uh, he needs to stop posing like this, another three or four weeks of dieting and he can be very very good very dangerous and as far as uh, the new coach i mean i hope he's gonna go back to his uh, old coach because he has more uh, time with him he probably knows his body more than a new coach would and if he had to choose a new coach who would be a great coach for nixilla i think somebody like chris asito would do a really good job with nixilla because Chris Asito is a conditioning guy, everybody who works with Chris Asito gets super shredded, some guys lose a little, bit of the, a little bit of the fullness and size, but if anybody can afford it, then it's this guy right here, if he lost some muscle, it wouldn't be an issue, he just needs to get as peeled as possible, he's always gonna be bigger than everybody else, I mean, nobody comes close to this kind of size. Stefan Kinsel also would be a great choice, I don't think you can go wrong with uh, Stefan Kinsel, uh, Milo Sharchev as well, he has experience with big guys, I mean he prepped uh, Bechrus here who won the show, and Stefan Kinsel prepped William Bonak and Nathan Diasha, but in all likeliness he's gonna go back to his uh, former coach uh, Francisco Jose Aspin, who also speaks Spanish, and Rubiel he's not exactly fluent in English, he doesn't speak English, I never heard him speak English or write captions in English, lengthy captions at least, so yeah, I think uh, this would definitely be the best choice in my opinion, go back to this coach, we'll see what he's gonna do, but as far as the next show, I mean, Texas Pro is in two weeks, that's too early if you ask me, maybe something like Legion Sports Fest, or that show in UK or Italy, 
We'll see, but I'm really happy to hear that he's going to continue competing, now going back to the old coach and hopefully this time everything will click for him, everything will go well, hopefully he won't get sick and he will have enough time, he can get ready and qualify for the Mr. Olympia, in my opinion, whatever you guys think about this whole situation, tell me down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, for more stuff like this about bodybuilding, subscribe to the channel guys, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best and bye bye.